Apocalypse starring Bruce Willis. I know what you're thinking. It's a licensed game based off one of the many movies that Willis starred in in the creative boom in the late 90s. But actually, the only thing that Activision licensed for this game is the voice and likeness of the man himself. When I was a kid and some of my favourite films were the likes of Twelve Monkeys and The Fifth Element, I always assumed one day I'd get to see this awesome non-existent movie. The gloomy and dark cyberpunk atmosphere of the game certainly took inspiration from some of Willis's best works. You play as scientist Trey Kincaid, whose former colleague has indoctrinated the world with his theories of a coming apocalypse. These become self-fulfilling prophecies when this self-stylized reverend uses his evil science powers to create his own personal Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. Kincaid is imprisoned as he's the only one who can stop the Reverend's reign of terror using his own scientific methods of shooting the hell out of everything that moves. The story is rather contrived and feels like it rushes ahead of itself during its short pre-rendered cutscenes which happen between levels, but it has its funny moments and the aforementioned stylish homage to Bruce Willis's most popular films at the time can really carry the player's attention and keep them hooked for the next round of chaotic gameplay. Activision hired Neversoft to develop Apocalypse which was salvaged from parts of a failed internal project featuring a buddy film-esque storyline where the player would have a constant companion throughout the game, presumably with the voice of Willis as this was what the voiceover was originally recorded for. The game then flourished into something more important to the PlayStation than it might seem, as Activision was so happy with Neversoft's progress, they decided to use the Apocalypse engine for Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, which the team started prototyping during development of the game apparently using their model of Bruce Willis as a skater in the early days. Neversoft continued to use the engine for Spider-Man in 2000, and it evolved alongside the Tony Hawk's Pro Skater series for years to come. Apocalypse is a run-and-gun action game with the mechanics of a twin-stick shooter. However, this was before Ape Escape, so the idea of using both analogue sticks simultaneously was not yet standard. Instead, aiming is done using circle, square, cross and triangle, which fire your current weapon relative to your character's position. Trey can also crouch and roll, sometimes utilising cover to avoid enemy fire. You'll want to stay on the move most of the time though, making sure enemies don't surround you. In these tight spots, a press of the R2 button will set off a bomb with limited use that will destroy surrounding enemies. In fact, all but your basic machine gun starting weapon have very limited use, and this is where clever play will get you through the increasingly difficult levels. Many weapons can be found all over every level, but it's usually a good idea to save them for an opportune moment. This can be as simple as flying enemies being hard to hit with the particle beam, as it can only fire horizontally, but being vulnerable to homing missiles. You can also think even further ahead, Early in the sewers level you get grenades which are effective against large groups of enemies, but save them for the boss, a giant crocodile who can defend himself by swimming underwater, and you can kill him off almost before he even gets chance to surface. Other bosses are an interesting mix of bullet hell gameplay where you'll be dodging projectiles with everything at your disposal and constantly firing on the enemy. This gameplay is all executed to the sound of some of the best PS1 era industrial rock you could imagine, courtesy of Ji Hun Huang. Not only that, licensed music was added to the game, by way of large TV screens around the levels, playing music videos from bands such as System of a Down and Purr. Apocalypse has some intricate level design, with a fair few extra lives or smart bombs hidden in secret areas, but you'll normally get them as well as different weapons by shooting environmental objects like boxes, pipes and walls. 
These things all explode, by the way, because this is an action game starring Bruce Willis. The only problem with navigating the levels with explosions and bullets flying everywhere is the incredibly clunky jumping controls, which lack precision. Pressing R1 to jump takes a lot of getting used to, and on top of that, I often find myself wasting a smart bomb, then running off the edge of a platform when I meant to jump. Camera angles are also both a blessing and a curse. On one hand, the camera shows off the environments beautifully by drawing your focus to distant areas where enemies are trying to snipe you, or giving you a bird's eye view of enemies trying to surround you. But there are often a lot of areas obscured which you might be getting shot from, usually to the left or right when the camera is facing dead ahead. There's one level in particular with floating platforms and a constantly rotating camera that made the limitations of 8-way aiming absolute hell, but this was a daring use of camera movement for the PS1 era, especially within this genre. Apocalypse may seem dated as a twin stick shooter without the twin sticks, but in other ways it carries staples of the genre that still persevere today. Take the smart bomb mechanic for instance. It also destroys any incoming bullets that may be about to hit you, giving you a chance to get your bearings if surrounded. This mechanic was used in the incredible twin stick shooter Enter the Gungeon, which is possibly the pinnacle of the genre. Playing Apocalypse on hard mode, I found the challenge to be just right, ramping up consistently with each new level. Occasionally dying felt fair because learning the levels, where enemies will appear and which weapons to use or save, makes the entire game satisfying and very replayable. The entire game culminates with possibly the most accurate portrayal of the White House I've ever seen in a video game. There are turrets, helicopters, attack dogs, and lava erupts left, right and centre, giving you less room to manoeuvre. It really feels like the game is throwing everything it's got at you, and to get through this in one piece takes a whole lot of concentration. Or you could do what I did as a kid, and use the infinite ammo sheet to constantly fire homing missiles in every direction. That's the beauty of this game, no matter how you play it, it's pure chaotic fun. Apocalypse is a prime example of a time when Activision, Neversoft, and indeed many other video game companies were consistently pushing the envelope, even whilst also trying to use huge Hollywood movie stars to sell their game. While the monologues from Bruce Willis boil down to nothing more than brainstormed catchphrases, his presence in the game made Apocalypse perhaps more memorable than it otherwise would have been. Either way, this is a great excuse to return time and again to the PS1's library. I've been Jake of theretroperspective.com, please subscribe if you enjoyed this video, and cheers for watching.